It is proper that we pause to pay reverent respect to those who laid the foundation of this great work. Brother and Sister Webster, and their car number is 20. Kate Wajardo, Tyler Spencer, Kate Graham, Kalani Richard, Emin Archer. I came on track because, <laughs> kind of because my parents signed me up, and I also just really wanted to go because my sisters had a fun experience on their last trip. I've heard stories about how fun it was in the previous years people have done it. It doesn't take a lot of convincing for me to go because I always love to get to know new friends in the stake. We all come closer together when we have our little families, and we all just have a good time together. They came from Nauvoo, they came from the British Isles, and from the nations of Europe. Their grand objective was Zion. They sang about it, they dreamed of it. It was their great hope. Their epic journey must stand forever as an incomparable undertaking. The movement of tens of thousands to these valleys of the West was fraught with every imaginable hazard, including death, whose grim reality was familiar to every wagon train and every handcart company. I was really impressed with our family at how quickly the brothers and sisters all came together and we really became a family and people started to really I feel like care about one another I know we were surprised at how much we really cared about our kids in our family and we wanted everybody to have a great experience getting to know the youth that were assigned to our group we only had seven they came together pretty quickly and their personalities we called one of them a Clydesdale because he got he was one of the youth leaders and he just he was a workhorse workhorse he really got was. in there and, and worked and that was great now, honestly um, I don't think we could have done it without him he was, really pulled more than his fair share he was wonderful They were travel-worn, these pioneers. It had taken 111 days to bring them from winter quarters to the Salt Lake Valley. They were tired, their clothes were worn. But here they were, looking down the years and dreaming a millennial dream, a grand dream of Zion. You are the fruit of all of their planning and of all of their labors. Whether you have pioneer ancestry or came into the church only yesterday, you are a part of this whole grand picture of which those men dreamed. Theirs was a tremendous undertaking. Ours is a great continuing responsibility. They laid the foundation. Ours is the duty to build on it. They marked the path and led the way. Ours is the obligation to enlarge and broaden and strengthen that path until it encompasses the whole earth. What a marvelous thing it is to have a great heritage, my brothers and sisters. What a grand thing to know that there are those who have gone before and laid out the way we should walk, teaching those great eternal principles which must be the guiding stars of our lives and of those who come after us. We today can follow their example. The 
Pioneers were people of great faith, of tremendous loyalty, of unthinkable industry, and of absolutely solid and unbending integrity. kind of like what we're built on. It's really cool to see what they exactly went through and be able to save you like they did in times of need. This is a great work that we've been given. This is a part of his grand design. So don't be weary. He will be with you and he will be I really think that it just, it shows that our ancestors, like our pioneer ancestors, really like, they worked hard to get here, and like, you get Zion, and that they, they had to go through so much to get there, and nothing could happen, because of, without the Lord, and I feel like, without him, they probably wouldn't have made it. This one's a 54 caliber rifle show you what that kind of looks like. This is a 54 caliber lead ball. Doesn't look very big, but it can do a lot of damage. Each of the families was rotated through who is sick. You know, would have to sit in the cart, and get pushed and at first that was kind of a benefit like oh i get to sit while you guys all push well in the afternoon which you're getting more tired we were rotating through and it was one of our older priests who had been you know really strong pushing the wagon for us we finished the activity and it was his turn to be you know the sick one in the cart and it was at the point where you actually had to lift the cart up over the fallen log and he immediately felt bad he's like oh no i can't be the sick one you guys have to pick it was like no you you have to be sick, and it was funny, it became more of a, I think the rest of the family really wanted to rally around proving that they didn't need him to do it. But it was also hard for him to sit back and watch everyone work when, you know, he really knew that he could. But that was also kind of a building moment in, you know, that family unity, you know, in just that short time that they found. Immediately when he saw, oh, there's this big challenge, I need to be out there to help. But that wasn't his, position at that time. His his job was to sit and be taken care of and a lot of times even in life we struggle to be the person being taken care of but you know we learn there's two parts of service. There's serving others and as many of us are struggle to do is allowing other people to serve us. So I thought that was a good moment for our whole family and also for him from a totally different perspective being the one being lifted up and carried. While doing a lot of the activities, I've learned to appreciate a lot of the trials they had to go through, and I can do the same thing if I just rely on the Lord. Showed me a little bit of what the pioneers did, and I'm really grateful that they did that, even though it was so long ago. 
We're still seeing the effects of it. That a lot of people did it. It's just that they've. That a lot of people have had a lot of families that have passed away during the Pioneer Trek, and it really did help us with our church and our history. So it's really cool to learn about that stuff. President Updike said, okay, this is going to be, uh, uh, you're the Mormon battalion, you know, and you're separating from the women, and remember that a lot of the women have lost their husbands along this whole trek, and so you're going to, you're heading off to war type thing, and so uh, he said, now you have to, we got to that place, I, and I can't remember where it was, but I know on the trek it was, we had to uh, pick up logs, and they had to be heavier than what would be comfortable. As you go through this, several of the young men had maybe picked up logs that were a little bit too challenging. You know, in the end, those logs represented those burdens that we carry unnecessarily. We were lined up along, I think what they called it, Widow's Peak, to where the woman's pull had to pull those, those hand carts up. I had complete confidence in all of the young women. I knew that we would all make it up that hill, but um, it was, it's nice to know that we can go through life together and not have to do that alone. And so when I look back on that experience of women crossing um, and doing things on their own, I am proud of that, but I also think that how nice it is when we can work together and not have to be alone. We all went back when they asked us to go back to our carts for the women's pool, there was just the two of us. And Abby and I looked at each other and she looked at me and she says, it's just us. And I said, oh no, they'll get us some help. I'm sure that they'll help. And she says, this just really touched me. She says, but we can do this. But there was a point where I thought I was gonna pass out. I, I couldn't breathe and I kept trying to kind of stand up. And I stood up one time and I saw the young men in the men's faces and I thought, I can't look at them. And so I just put my head back down and thought, nope. And then I thought, I've got to breathe or I'm gonna pass out. And there, there's gonna, this is gonna be just too much. And so I stood up and I said, hold up. And they stopped and I just took about four or five deep breaths. Uh, okay, and we went on. And somewhere, at some point, um, women came and helped us. Young women came down and helped us that last little bit. And they didn't say a word. They just boosted me over and held push. And I, I just thought that that's kind of how the Savior is. He lets us work hard as hard as we can. And then all of a sudden, our load gets lighter because He's there to help us. For me. The most profound thing about that experience was watching my sweet wife walking up this hill that was a huge struggle and her still being willing to do it and the young women having a difficult time. One person from her ward, she's like eight months pregnant and she's pulling this hand cart and bright red and I thought, that's the kind of people we have with us. 
those are the kind of people that pulled the handcarts in the pioneer times and struggling along but still being willing to do it and it really really touched me uh, to the point I mean it was like life-changing I'm thinking I am so happy to be married to this woman who has that kind of character and all the women that were there I, I developed this I mean I've had an appreciation before but I had this incredible profound appreciation for women in general This weighs 400 pounds.
Did they ever become discouraged? Of course they did. Faith was the guiding principle in those difficult days. Faith is the guiding principle which we must follow today.